This feels like a very large fish, this one, Tobes. He's a big one. What a <laughs> take. That's ruined my day, though. Nice six down the edge, Tobes, to finish. Hi, everybody. I'm Robbie Taylor, and today it's my turn to be in front of the Match Day live cameras. I've brought you to a stunning fishery in Surrey, not too far from Guildford. It's called Willingshurst, and we're here because we're practicing for the Fish South final. It's a great final over two days and I've drawn John's lake today and Top Lake's the other lake in. So the idea of the final is you fish one lake one day, then you change the other lake the other day. So it looks like good fishing conditions. I haven't drawn the best peg, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. Right, so we've made it to the peg. Uh, like I say, it's probably not the best one on the lake. It's peg 43. Um, the only bad thing about it here is it's quite wide and a lot of fish being caught in a feeder at the moment. So we wanna get on that bar and it's quite a distance away and the wind's getting a bit nasty, which doesn't help as well. Add to that, we're back in the bay a little bit, so I don't want to sound like I'm playing it down, but um, might be up against it a little bit. But I've set up a few things. I've set up a bomb rod. A lot of fish being caught on the bomb here. Just a little inline bomb set up. We might go into how that's set up a bit, a bit later on. Nice short hook length. It's very hard bottom out there, so I like a short hook length. Um, and we've got a method feeder. A couple of the guys caught really well on this lake on the method feeder yesterday. So I've set up a little method, 14 MWG, so no messing about there. Pole rigs, I think I'll just show you one of the rigs, but they're all very similar. They're all a 0.4 bobby. Uh, it's around, well, it's about my number two section deep, so I'm guessing that's around, around three and a half, maybe four foot max. So all around that sort of depth, and they've just got a nice sort of spread bulk sort of arrangement. Just make sure your rig's in a, a nice arc. I really like that one I'm fishing with, uh, with hard pellets especially. Uh, like I said, I've got three rigs like that, and I've got that set up just at sort of a top five just here. Good mate of mine, Michael Williams, was on this lake yesterday, caught really well there. So I feel like sort of cheeky little line down my peg, I'd call it. It's like 14 meters down my peg, but away from the bank. A lot of fish have been caught on the other bank in the edge, but this bank, not a lot's been caught on the edge at the moment. So I'm just gonna fish a little bit further away from the bank. And add to that, I've actually got a rig slightly closer to the bank in maybe sort of two and a half, three foot of water. And then I've got a rig next to this platform here. It looks amazing. I'm sure Toby's probably going to get a cutaway or something of the platform because it looks incredible next to this platform. But they're not really catching downhills in this bank, so might be worth having to go there later on, but we'll see. Okay, so we've been fishing a couple of minutes. Um, I've started on a method which I wouldn't generally do on a fishery like this, like relatively small lake. You, usually you can get one or two early short, but. Um, a bit of good information yesterday, a couple of my mates on this lake, Mark Collard and Mikey Williams, said method early was really good. Some people catch them on literally first chuck. So start on a method on, onto the shallow bar. Um, another thing I've done is I've fed a few eight mils around it straight away. Uh, they just seem to really respond well to noise on this lake at the moment. So rather than just making a little trap and waiting, we try and make something happen a little bit, even though it's only the first cast. Oh. There we go, first fish on. <clears throat> the line was still sinking on that one. So second cast, first cast five minutes. I literally picked up my catapult to fire in some pellets and we got one on, so that's a good sign. One or two other fish caught, young Alfie up there has caught one. Well, he's just about to land one. Looks like a big fish. This isn't a particular, this might even be a Crassio, the way it's fighting. But we'll take whatever we can get for now. Yeah, it is, Crassio. Quite good look Crassio, yes. So, pretty good start. <laughs> Nice fish. Try and hold him out. <laughs> Don't know. It's probably best part two or three pounds, so definitely take him. I was just on a six mil activated pellet. I'm gonna get some cell ones out, actually, because sometimes the cell pellets, I mean, rather, the cell pellets a lot of the time are a bit lighter than the activated ones, so a cell pellet on the hook could see being quite good. We'll stick with the activated for now. Oh! <laughs> Feels like another Caracio. Little nest of Caracios. Same thing again, that line was just sinking and the rob was round, so. Yeah, it's gotta be, I think. Oh no, he's a little carp, I think. Yeah, a little tiny carp, probably the small, smallest carp in the lake, that one. Well, it's still not bad, he's probably 44 pound, 11. Rinse and repeat at the moment if it stays like this. So I've just had a chuckles four mil pellets around the feeder. 
didn't go around, but I thought I'd just show quickly um, how exactly I've prepared them. And this is them just here. The best way to do them is the night before. So I soaked them, they're four mil mainline activated pellets. You can see they've gone nice and soft and they're a little bit tacky. So, and the way you get them tacky is if you soak them for four minutes the night before, then when you get to your, to your swim in the morning, just put a little tiny bit of water on them until they go that sort of tacky texture. I also put a little bit of cell smart liquid on them, which is quite a sugary liquid and that adds a bit more tackiness still so they can go around the feeder lovely i'm just i'll just load up the feeder now try and show you exactly what i mean again just like with the micros you want to compress them really hard into the feeder so if i squeeze that really hard you can see there i'm sure that'll break down no problem and get to the bottom no problem so one little more squeeze and, uh yeah i think we're doing two fish or crass you and a carp no need to panic yet Odd fish have been caught. Um, maybe two or three could be best. I don't know, but it's very early days. Generally, the Willings is the kind of venue I like to split it up into almost a, a four and a two. So first four hours, usually scratching around, trying to catch whatever you can. And then the last two hours, things can change a bit. Even though, even though yesterday wasn't quite like that. I was here yesterday on the on the match and drew the other lake. And to be honest, the last two hours were a bit of a struggle, but. Generally speaking, you can have a good finish here. So that was on the four mils. Second cast on the four mils, so might have made it always hard to know if it actually made a difference, but certainly done no harm. A bit tricky here to keep your rod low. It rushes to my left and it's better playing into the right, it seems. But yeah, that was out there a few, I sort of extended my cast. So I'm fishing with four mils now. I just feel like you can wait that little bit longer. So that was out there four and a half minutes. <clears throat> Still on the six mil on the hook. And I was just thinking of other options and it's gone round. So it's not going through your head what you can go on next. But to be honest, it's not going too bad on this. Not loads has been caught. Just looking around now, no one's got fish on. So this one's been quite well behaved. And if I keep my rod alive, I might be able to just get him. Nice fish. Skinny one. It's been on the diet this one, Tobes. About the length for a six pounder, but he's probably about five, maybe less even. And while we've got a second, I'm a terrible setter upper at the best of times. Um, we'll go for a little bit of the bait, so couldn't really be much simpler actually. Uh, we've got two and four mil mainline activated pellets for the feeder. Uh, I think we've gone through briefly how we soak them. And four mils for four minutes, two mils, generally around two minutes, depends on the batch a little bit, but around two minutes I did them the night before. And there are our feeder options. Then I've got six and eight mil pellets for the pole. Like I've already said, um, Mikey gave me a good tip off yesterday that eight mils on the pole were much better. So that's dead simple, not loads of options. And then the edge, I'm not that confident of catching down there. I've got to be honest. But if we are going to catch down there, a good mate of mine catches loads of fish in the edge, Pete Upton. He won the match here last week, uh, feeding some meat mush in the edge with some ground bait. So I'm looking at that. The only thing I'm thinking is, why well, they're maybe not coming in the edge at the moment is, it's been like sort of 11, 12 degrees in the mornings when you get here. So I'm not sure temperature, that means it's going to be at say 4 a.m. in the morning. So. I'd be thinking they're going to be they're going to be tricky to catch in the edge if you get any in your peg, and on this on this bank yesterday none even came in the edge. So it's a pellet. It's an all-out pellet sort of attack for a large part of the match. Then we'll see what happens in the last two hours. Yeah. Oh, here we go. I don't know how long he was on times. Feels like a crassio. Weird looking fish, unhooked himself in the net. It's like a ghost Caracio looking thing. Nice, nice for the thumbnail this one, Tobes. Would hold him up, but he's going absolutely crazy in the net, so let's put him in. That was a wicked looking little fish. Yeah. It was like, it must have been an F1. I've never seen a ghost Caracio before. He was like really funky looking. Right, so we're about just over an hour into the match. I've had 
two Cressios, sort of big, big old bream, and a couple of carps. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, if you'd offered me that at the start, I probably would have taken it. Not loads has been caught. A handful of fish might be best. Might have been a bit unlucky that more of my fish weren't carp. If, uh, if it had five, five carp, I'd be well happy with that, obviously. But still doing all right. Generally, if you hear, you know, there's a good chance one of the MPEGs could run away with it, but it doesn't seem like it's that kind of day. I'm just going to stick on this for a little bit. I'm very conscious that I'm going to need something to either rest this or change to, so I'm going to open up a line. I've been thinking about this a little bit at like 20 meters, I want to say. 20 meters, which is on this lake, sort of no man's land. I feel like if I fed there, I might have it to myself a bit. So I've fed it a couple of times. I'm not going to. I'm not going to feed it for too long before going on, on it. I'm going to feed it for maybe another 10 minutes and then have a look on it because I'm not fishing for millions of fish here and I don't want to be priming it up for ages. Maybe like say potentially an hour. I might have fed, fed it say 20, 30 times by then. There's loads of bait there and you're only really fishing for realistically one or two fish anyway. So I'd much rather feed it for maybe 10 minutes. You end up with maybe 100 pellets there. Hopefully a few of them would have been eaten and uh, I'll chuck up a little bomb over it probably and hopefully that'll give me another little run and it can work both ways, that kind of thing. You can rest this line where I'm chucking a feeder, just keep my line out of the water for a little bit and I'll give a nick one or two on that as well. So that's, that's going to be the next port of call, I think. I wild card in terms. Uh, I bought in, was it Jackson from Chelsea? Chilwell from Chelsea. Um, who else did I bring in? The Kanji, City Defender. He seems to be playing. Yeah, I've had Foden from day one. But he, he didn't do anything first week. But again, he, he played well. It was just like, he, he just didn't get any points. He's brilliant. He's such a good player, Foden, isn't he? When they met him, like Frankie met him, he didn't know who he was. He's all right, mate. <laughs> So I'm just going to have a quick go on that short line. Like I said, I've been priming it up for maybe 10, 10, 15 minutes. I'm just going to put an eight mil, same as what I'm feeding out there. So best thing to do with this style of fishing is to get, grab, I'm not feeding loads there, sort of five pellets. Flick them into a spot. They're a bit short, so let's try a bit better this time. Now the wind's being a nightmare. Yeah, they're a bit better. I'm just going to try and flick it just maybe the back end of the feed. Pretty happy with that. And what often happens is, I'd like to catch one on this, obviously, that'd be great, but just feel like that feeder line needs a bit of a resting. So, fish that pretty much from the start of the match. And what can happen is, they just get bored of that feeder hitting the water and they're just backing off it. So, I'm gonna give this a go, maybe 15 minutes or so. So, that'll probably equate to two or three chucks. And then the next port call after that will be back on the, back on the feeder, but. Not a lot's been caught. It's that stage of the match now where those early fish have been caught. And it's a bit slow. Oh, Steve. Gudgeon. Gudgeon on paste. No. I'm one of the best anglers ever. Catching Gudgeon next year is probably not fishing very well. A little beep then, Tobes. What was that? A little beep then. It went beep. Don't know what it was. Oh. That was on that short line. So just a little beep on Toby's uh, camera. I was trying to see what the crack was and the rod's off the rest on that short line, which is a really good sign because I can't see that anyone else has fished that or ever fished that. So that's one for the final maybe. Keep up your sleeve, a little short line, no man's land. Did have one or, one or two little tiny liners as well, which was interesting. Yeah, that have been out there seven minutes. So I was not far from reading that in and not probably having another goal on it. So that is lucky. Well, I say lucky, I've not landed it yet. Yeah, it's probably the biggest one of the day, that one as well. Six, seven pound. I feel like I saw Vern that one. So. Definitely try that again. Maybe we'll be able to 
have a little go at playing these two lines off each other now. That was just on this normal brown 8mm pellet. I might just talk through this rig quickly because maybe a little bit different to your average bomb rig. It's uh, got a few little things that I think help me catch a few more fish to be honest on the bomb. So I've got a two thirds of an ounce inline bomb which I like. And that there, I don't know if I can just hold it to this camera here. If it's in focus or not, sorry Tobes. But that's just a extra small pole connector on our large heli swivel. What I like about that, it just stiffens up that little link there. If you see, if I had like a, if I'm just holding in front of there. If I had it on a speed stop, say, then that'll be loose in there and running like a bit like this, if you can imagine. But with it being like uh, secured in place, it's nice and tight and a nice short hook length. I'm sure just results in a few extra pickups. So didn't certainly do, didn't do any harm on that fish. So we're definitely gonna have another go at that. Literally, I've probably not fed a hundred pellets here yet. Like I said, I added a couple of liners, so with a bit of luck, we might get another one there. So no more bites on that short line, unfortunately. No more signs either, so... I'm just gonna keep flicking an odd pellet there, not many, but I'm gonna just maybe let a couple of fish group up there. One thing we're gonna do is I've noticed an odd fish coming out on a short pole. And while this peg's probably not the best short pole peg, um, I've got that option just down my peg, fishing away from the bank. So I'm just going to feed some sixes and a couple of eights. And uh, I'm just going to maybe feed that two or three times in between casts on either that bomb or the feeder. And um, yeah, it'd be good to catch a couple on that because they're generally better fish on that short line. So I'm just going to feed, I don't know, I don't know what that'll end up being there. Maybe like 50 sixes and a few eights, just wrap them in. Feel like because I'm not maybe on the best peg for fishing short as a fish away from myself a little bit more it might just let, let the fish group up a little bit better so I'm going to tee that up for I don't know maybe 15 minutes or so give it give it one more feed and then I'll probably have a look on it but that's the only bite I had on that short line so I'm just going to get back out on that method where I've not fished for probably not fished that for getting on for half an hour so quite confident of a bite on this but the problem is like not many people in this little area are catching out in the middle now like it's got Steve Gardner's on my left like, all-time fishing legend one of the best ever and he's only had a couple of fish chap opposite he's only had a couple of three fish and the same with the chap next to him so just thinking it's not fishing particularly well what if I can catch for this first no, probably three or four hours it's going to be a real bonus if that underwater footage has taught us anything so any like decent movement on the tips probably moving your feet i just had a liner then it was well it was one of those ones where you just got to reel in just sort of and the fish like when i picked up the fish that hit my line was probably only like 20 meters out no probably even closer than that maybe 15 meters out so i had to reel in i didn't really have a choice but i think that's really important if you get like a big liner and you think oh my feeders might have moved like an inch or two that would be all right you're better off just reeling in and chucking it out again you've got to reset that trap it's almost got to be the perfect trap especially on days like today where the, the fish are being a bit crafty and hard to catch yeah you we're in here tobes that's in the mouth that one as well so i missed that bite twice before i hooked this fish that is really promising. Did not expect that. I'm starting to think I probably should have fed this a bit earlier now. It's me probably being a bit too negative, thinking it's going to fish harder than it has done, even though yesterday was quite a good match. This one's determined to get on the bar. Really good sign. Let's see him, he's about 20 meters away. Good fish. If you break all your pole down all at once, then you're scrambling for your top kit trying to get it on. It's much easier to really better fish. Just take your time and if you've got to break your pole down or add sections on, it's, it's really the, the least of your troubles. He's been a bit better, but better behaved now. Easy. Good fish. These are the ones you generally catch short, better fish. So he's probably seven or eight pounds in, not massive, just a torpedo like common. 
that looked way off the bottom when I looked at then. Sometimes they are in the mouth like that, but... Dive. What does it look like on the camera, though? Does it look like it was off the bottom? Like when I hooked it, it looked like I've hooked it like two foot off the bottom. <laughs> you didn't hear that, Tobes don't know what that looks like. <laughs> Tobes don't know what it looks like, so... Maybe it's just so big that... That's how it looked at the time. I'm just trying to keep my pole low on this one because... If you imagine you're a fish trying to run away from you. If it's got to pull your pole through the water and your, and your elastic. You know, it's, it's a bit more pressure on it. it. Feels like it's hooked a bit weird. Feels like it could be hooked in the face somewhere, this one. It's hard to get my head first sometimes in the barrel like this. There we go. Let's try to think, I might just cut out the six mils. I don't know if that's making a massive difference though. I don't know what to say. Foden's not playing. Foden's not playing. Foden's not playing. And, and, yeah. You're joking. What a <laughs> take. That's ruined my day though. That has ruined my day. So that's about three hours in. Um, I think I've had, was it five, maybe six carp and a few other fish. So it's going all right. I'm setting the house to the, uh, the world alight, but I've had a few bites. This line here has been good. So I have opened up this short line just in front of me as well, where I'm just sort of just feeding like three or four, eight mils quite regular. It's like a similar depth there. The only thing I'm a bit wary of is splitting my fish too much. So yeah, I'm not really sure at the moment. Sort of at the crossways a little bit in the match at the minute. So it's like the halfway stage, of course. Yeah, we'll stick at it and do another report back soon. Okay, so what I'm thinking now is I've missed quite a few bites on that that line I've been fishing down the bank and not a lot to show for it, but what I've got is a rig a bit further up the slope. So I want to say if I'm fishing like three and a half foot, maybe, maybe even four foot to be honest, this rig's maybe know, just under three foot, maybe two and a half, three foot. So I'm just fed some bait there. I'm aware that that's the only place I've had any bites, but just feel like it's just maybe a little bit too deep or the fish are getting in the silt a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a quick look where I've been chucking some some pellets short. I've been chucking them there about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. So I'm gonna have a look there and just see if I can just nick one or two. People, everyone's fishing short now. A lot of people fishing in the edge. Not seen any caught in the edge yet, but I don't think it'd be too long potentially. So, yeah, it's good as well to, because I am practicing essentially, it's good to try stuff like this. So that line, like in that slightly shallow water on the slope, so I'd be quite confident if I, if I had a few bites there, they might be a little bit easier to catch potentially. And this line here is short. I've been, like I said, I've been not feeding loads, maybe like three or four pellets quite regular. And I'm looking at this like a, maybe a tick over line. Like where like, I've been just feeding by hand. Another tip off from Mikey, to be fair, he said just feed everything by hand short. It's just uh, over a bit of an area. I think that might be costing me a little bit down the bank because I am cupping everything in. Feeding maybe a little bit too much on a sixpence and they're quite hard to catch when they're like that sometimes. So I'm just gonna have a little go here, then I'm gonna try that, try that spot up the slope a bit in, not too, in the not too distant future. It's in the mouth. No, he's just outside the mouth. That's why he felt a bit weird. It's on the nose, Tobes. Around the nose. A beautiful fish. So I'm starting to think the only way I'm gonna do any good now is to catch a, catch a few in the edge. That short line seems to promise a lot, but it doesn't really seem to be happening. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to feed the edge one more time. 
fed, I started off, I fed three pots down there. Well, probably more like, more like two and a half, sort of two of ground bait, and one with some, some meat and corn. I'm just gonna literally feed it and drop almost straight over it. I haven't seen any signs of fish down there, but it might be just a little bit too deep to see them anyway. So I'm just gonna keep flicking a few pellets in that short line. But there's a lot of people catching and I don't sound like I'm making excuses, I just feel like the peg's not maybe strong enough. Just get an odd bite, but you can't seem to string anything together, which it's usually the way when there's not loads of fish in your peg, so... You not know they call this peg, genuinely. I drew this peg last year, and you know what they call it? The peg. All the other pegs in this lake seem quite good. And this is the only one that just seems quite Yeah, they just... And I, even when I drew it that day, I was like, why is it so bad? They were like, don't know, it just is. <laughs> it just tells me there's... Coming in your peg a bit coy, like that. I've just dropped in a... Literally, as soon as the float settled. But... It's what happens after that, which is sort of the problem. Sort of starting to think, so I'm fishing black hydro on this rig and I just feel like I could probably fish heavier. I could probably fish purple on that short line. The way they pull, because as soon as you hook them, they are ang big angry fish. So I'm just thinking next time I come on this lake, I might, I'm practicing at the end of the day. I might try purple on that short line, especially because the way I've seen Steve catch them and a couple of the others, you probably want to be getting him in a bit quicker than what I am. Mind you, this one's not being too badly behaved. I spoke too soon. Yeah. Good fish on that short line. Pretty much the same size as the ones you catch on the edge. So, it's not over yet. We've still got just... Just over an hour, just over an hour maybe in about an hour left. Ah, if I don't stick a hook in my hand. Uh, let's see if we'll get this in there. I think we'll have another go short, even though I'm pretty confident we won't get one there. And then uh, another look in the edge, I think. It's just backing up even more like what a fool. Like, no one's saying that. Moaned one on. Can't beat moaning one on, Tobes, even though you might be found up. great bite so reinforcing a little bit of what I was saying it's just not solid on this short line I've got another one on it but it's taken me a while to catch it maybe you know, at this stage of the match it's probably taking me 10 minutes to get one more bite when considering I had a bite almost straight away off the last fish you'd think there'd be two or three there but it's just not not been solid at all I'm afraid it's a shame because a good fish when you can get one it just yeah, they are nice fish when you can get them. So right now, oh, he's right in the sun, I can't see him. Yeah, so right now I'm thinking, I'm probably gonna chuck a few more pellets short. I'm gonna feed the, oh, no, no, sorry, I'm gonna feed the edge first with a little bit of bait, not loads. And I'm gonna drop on that and just keep chucking a little pellet short and maybe have another run on that. Cause those are my two only chances really. Come on, nice, nice six down the edge tobes to finish. Is that too much to ask? I don't think it is. I've had a couple of bites down the edge and I missed one. Dropped literally straight back in and foul up to fish pretty much as soon as my rig hit the bottom. So really frustrating when I only had a couple of bites down there. Struggling to get one in the mouth. The only thing I'm thinking, because they caught so well on the other bank yesterday in the slightly deep water, I have fished off the bank a little bit more maybe Maybe it's like two foot or so where I'm fishing, whereas in the bank it's quite a bit shallower where they didn't catch yesterday. So it's a different day today. So quite possibly they're happier in that shallow water again. Mm. That one nearly pulled the pole out of my hands. Oh. I don't think I was fishing red hydro, would you? So while I've got this fish, I'm going to briefly talk about my edge rig. I'm pretty sure we didn't do it in the chat earlier. So it's uh, about just over two foot deep, I'd say, where I'm fishing. It's 0.4 JL, with just a bulk of number eights, just above a four inch hook length to a 14 XS, Super XS rather. It's a lovely hook. 
perfect for a bit of meat. It's just, it's just not solid down there. It's taking me a little, again, it's taking me a little while to catch this one. I could do with catching them a lot quicker than what I am if I'm ever going to make up any ground. If anything, I'm just falling further behind the good pegs. <laughs> Definitely learnt quite a bit already though. Thinking about that four mil round method was good, was good earlier. You know, that mush down the edge just for corn seems better than feeding ground bait, so it's definitely been worth, worth the excursion and I hope it's not been too boring. It was never coming off that one. I just feel like I think we've got about 35 minutes to go. If I could catch four more, it's probably asking for a bit much, asking a bit much rather, but yeah, that short line might be worth one or two, but I feel like just feel like this edge is gonna be the one. Right, good signs. Literally next drop in with another one, so let's just try that again. Exact same thing. About 10 grains of corn, a little ball of meat mush. Right, this, can all, this can go all too quick, so now I'm gonna keep the bait going on that short line as well. But yeah, what is another four? If they keep coming that quick, it could be better, but. I'm not going to get too greedy just yet. This feels like a very large fish, this one, Tobes. Fish really well this last part of the match. I think that short line's cost me, to be honest. If we've not had that quite right, or... Hey, he's a big one. Or, uh, he's a really big one. Or, they've just not been here quite as much. Very long that one, so I can get them out of the landing there. Mm. Right, so we've got about, well, Toby said five minutes about one minute ago, <laughs> so it must have about four minutes, are we? About four. About four minutes, Toby reckons, so I'm not going to bully this or anything like that. I'd be doing anything silly, but there's so many there at the moment. I feel like if we get this one in, you might, you might get a chance of another one. So I think this will be my eighth. Eighth, eighth, the eighth in, in the last, I don't even think it's been the last hour, I think it's been about the last 45 minutes. As quick as I can, I'm going to try and get them off another one, I might not have time to feed even. Again, you weren't never coming off that 14 excess, no way. Nah. Okay, that's the end of the match. So... Yeah, let's get some gear packed up. See where we end up. Uh, I've had a really, really good match to be fair. Uh, learnt loads. Uh, to start with, that feeder was really interesting. A few early fish with micros around it, but I'm, I'm thinking with the weather getting a bit cooler, definitely coming up, that fours could be the way. Catching those extra few fish. I think those smarter fish might just get pulled by it as well. That line down the bank, I also think that's going to be a really good one as well, especially on the trickier pegs when it's maybe a lower weight day. Today it's fished quite well couple of weeks time I'm guessing it might fish a little bit harder so the edge which is really where you've got a good chance of winning the match you've got to get the edges right so if you they don't always come in but when you they do come in you've got to be slaying them and eight fish in the last sort of just under an hour for me I was really happy with that so that that meat and corn combination meat mush that is as well and no ground bait definitely seemed key to hooking the fish better so as, as for the results 240 pounders won this lake and that was Ben on peg 11. The thing that's quite frustrating for me is I've had sort of a match where I've not gone long periods without catching and I've actually been quite close to coming second in the whole match. Only 200, only 200 pounds won, uh, time second rather, and I've had 183. So frustrating, but that's fishing and I'll see you on the next one.